Got a super cool case for you guys. Um, this is one of the ones that my digital dentistry residents and I did. Um, chronic adult periodontitis patient. She has class two, class three mobility on all our teeth, except um, pretty much six back um, are pretty stable. So we're gonna extract seven all the way through 11. And we're gonna, we're gonna place some implants and meet a load of prosthesis. So the first thing that we do is we take super high quality intraoral scans and we go ahead and do 3D face scans and everything, ultra low dose CBCT. And we put all this stuff into PlanCAD Premium. And you can see here, we're doing an outside in approach to the smile design, You're looking at the inner pupillary line, the midline, the facial aesthetics, the lip line, the lip at rest, uh, facial thirds, everything's taken into consideration with this, this wax up. And then what's really cool it being an open system is you just right click and hit export scene and you can save it as an STL but make sure you select um, use default orientation so all everything's kind of pinned together. So here we have the ultra low dose CBCT from the Viso. Look at, um, and what's cool about the Viso as you don't know is you could just hand select the field that you want to expose. It's custom every time. It's really cool. So you know, this patient has, like I said, bone loss. Um, they're, they're super unhappy with the aesthetics of their teeth. Um, we're gonna fix all that for them. And so what's, what's fun, I think, about this whole process is you, you spend all the time, number one, just wowing the patient with all this technology, but you spend all the time on the computer beforehand and you save hours of clinical time with the patient. So let's talk through the steps. The first step is you're gonna merge the intraoral scan with the CBCT. And to do this in Remexis, you just basically any CBCT, any STL, it's all open. You click three points and Remexis is gonna go through an iterative closest point best fit algorithm and just finalize that fit. It's gonna be perfect. Um, it's, it's really remarkable how these things fit together. So nice from, from the algorithm in Remexis. And you could also check on the cross-sectional view just to triple check and make sure that your your intraoral scan is lining up perfectly with your DICOM data set because everything's gonna be based off of this merge and if it's off, you have to redo it. So the next thing is we're gonna bring in our wax up and what's cool is Romexis remembers the orientation of that from PlanCAD Premium Export so there's no merging that needs to occur, it's just a click of a button and you can see we perfectly have that wax up instantly merged in with the intraoral scan. Everything's pinned together to the DICOM data set and now we're ready to pick or implants. There's like a gajillion implants you could pick from. All your favorite manufacturers are in there. Some implant manufacturers have partnered with Plymeca to put all their specs in there so you don't have to do any mathematics as it relates to sleeve height. So like for example, Strawman, Camlog, BioHorizons, um, Uris, which is one of my faves. Um, everything's predetermined so you don't have to, 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 you don't have to do anything. Um, this case, Astra, phenomenal implant but you have to do some mathematics for the sleeve height. Um, you have to know the total drill length and you have to move the sleeve manually to the appropriate depth depending on the, the, the size of the implant that you're placing. So you have to have that all figured out. Okay, so once you have your implants placed, virtually you're going to want to parallel some. So we're going to parallel the two anteriors to, and then and we're going to then parallel the posteriors to do separate and distinct final prosthesis, this will be separate and distinct bridges there. Um, and so Romexis makes it really easy to plan these. We're gonna use the location, angulation, and depth of about three millimeters apical to the facial CEJ of the diagnostic wax up and about two millimeters palatal. And of course, this depends on what kind of implant you're using, right? If it's a platform switched implant with the internal conical connection um, with a Morris taper, you're more likely to place it deep if it's not platform switched, you better not place it deep in the bone. You're going to get you're going to get die back. Um, so you want to place that just a little bit super crestal. So um, all these things matter, and you need to know what implant you're placing to determine the, the the depth. It's not just like a mindless thing that you just automatically for every implant you put in the same depth. But for this particular implant, this is a aggressively platform switched implant with a phenomenal connection. Um, very similar, actually, to Eurus implants. All good, good implants. So we're going to go ahead and and place these subcrestal about three millimeters or two, yeah, about three millimeters to get that that good emergence profile with our with our prosthesis and everything like that, um, and preserve that facial tissue there. So now what we're going to do is just go ahead and finalize our sleeve heights. Like I said, in this system, it's manual. So 
you know, you, you need to know, and it's all published data, but you need to know your total drill lengths, your sleeve height, um, your offset for any lips on the sleeve, and, and everything like that. And so now we're going to bring all this information. We placed our, our retention pins, and we actually are using Eurus retention pins. These are screw-in type retention pins. The main thing about retention pins is you have to put them in good data. So you want to make sure that when you do your intraoral scan, you go high up into the vestibule. So now at Remexis, we circle the area you want our guide to fit, and then we hit remove, and we circle the teeth that we want to virtually extract from the model, and Remexis will automatically do that for us, enabling us to render those sleeves perfectly, which are sticking in the teeth right now, but it's going to go ahead and delete that from the, from the model render. So you can see here, perfect. This is beautiful. This is a perfect rendering. I'm going to go ahead and put some holes on the palate, right around the greater palatine and incisive papilla area, so when this thing is retained with the screw retained pins, we could go ahead and boost anesthesia if we need to without taking out the surgical guide every five minutes. So now what we need to do, um, this is the, the surgical guide, that's what it looks like printed, add a little hole for verify seating on the teeth as well. Those holes in the palate also verify seating um, in the soft tissue. So you can see everything renders beautifully. Now, we spent all this time, we got our implants just the way we want them, we did our wax up, um, in perfect occlusion, and the smile is perfect with it. What are we going to do with all this information? It's worthless if we just, I don't know, just don't do anything with the information. <laughs> Some systems are completely closed and you can't do anything. With Romexis, what we're going to do is we're just going to go up to export, um, and we're going to export everything. The guide, the fitted models, the wax up, the extension tubes, the implant locations, everything's going to pop out as separate and distinct STL files. And from this information, the sky's the limit. In this particular instance, we're going to put it into MeshMixer, which is a free software, probably one of my favorite softwares ever. Um, you could put this into back into PlanCAD Premium. You could put it into FreeShape. You could send it to your laboratory. But for, for $0, you could put it into MeshMixer here. And what we're going to do in Mesh Mixer, you can see all the files, the extension tubes are there, the implant locations are there, the wax ups there, the original intraoral scan. We're going to go ahead and make a pre-surgical prosthetic here. This is the same way we do our hybrids as well. Um, so the first step is we need to make a vertical stop on the palate. And we're going to make a little kind of little mini palate denture. And the way that we do that is we just go to the select tool and we highlight the palate. Um, and then we're going to hit B on the keyboard, B as in boy, to smooth that border so that it's not so jagged. So there's the B, nice, perfect, smooth, and then we're going to hit Y. Y is going to separate that out as its own file, and then we're going to go to extrude, and we're going to extrude it two to three millimeters to make it fit. So that's basically how we just created in about three seconds a perfectly fitting palatal jig. Now, this is an extra step, maybe not needed, but you could go ahead and drag the default balls in from Mesh Mixer. Um, double click them and sep separate them into one file, combine them, and then Boolean difference them from the palette. So select the palette first, then select the balls and hit Boolean difference. And you're going to cut holes in that palette. That will help you verify that the palatal jig is seating on pickup. And go ahead and pick these up. So the next thing is, and this, this probably is an oversight on our part on the wax up, but the linguals are deficient based off of the implant locations. So we're going to go ahead and make the implant extension tubes magnetic and we're going to use the attract tool and we're just going to go ahead and boost those linguals out and they'll go all the way to the most palatal aspect of those extension um, tubes. Okay so these kind of represent the titanium temp cylinders that will be screwed into either the multi-units or direct a fixture depending on the route that you go. Um, and so the next step now is to bulk it all out. You can't be too bulky here, because remember, this is milled 3D printed. In this case, it's milled on the um, um, milled out of PMMA. But this is why you need a puck mill if you're going to do cool stuff like this. Highly recommend. Obviously, you guys need to check out the 50S mill. It's a game changer. But we're going to bulk this out. You need to go ahead and strengthen this, because you're going to be immediate loading, right? And the immediate load success is based off of the stability gained from the prosthesis. And if you break this prosthesis during, especially during the critical um, initial healing time, you're, you're basically dead in the water, right? You're, you're going to be moving those implants and, and torquing them as the patient bites. 
and you're done. So you're toast. So you want this thing to be wicked strong, which is why milled currently is a little bit better than 3D printed. Um, but either way, we've done it both ways every day, twice on Sunday, but the best thing to do is bulk it out when in doubt. So make sure you make it strong. I'm gonna alleviate some pressure on the tissue down there um, just to help with the pickup so that it's not binding. Um, even though in this particular uh, instance, um, we're not doing osseous reduction, and it's even more critical not to have it too bulky there on the, on the cervical area. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut holes in our prosthesis. And it's really easy. You just click the prosthesis first, then you click your extension tubes and you hit Boolean difference. Now, if you guys are lost, come to one of our hands-on training courses where we go through this in detail. Um, we spend basically a whole day going through this. Every minute detail will be covered and it, it's really fun. Um, so the final step, the thing that's super critical is connecting that prosthesis to the palatal jig because when you pick this up in the mouth, you want it to be at your perfect vertical you want it to be where exactly you planned it. And if you don't have the palatal stop, it makes it really difficult. In the mandibular, we oftentimes use the retromolar pad. Um, yes, we could have extended the, the tissue areas to the exact abutment margin, um, but it, it's actually a little bit too precise to try to do that. This is, this is a much better and faster way. And so these little arms are just default um, arms in mesh mixer and you basically just drag them onto the prosthesis and then rotate them so that they're grabbing onto the pallet. There's a hundred ways to do this. If you want to be a little bit more professional about it, you could use um, more normal type shaped things that are like little arms, but it doesn't matter. This is fast and easy. Um, we're going to go ahead and delete any part of those arms that are sticking out through the pallet by selecting that and then hitting X to delete and then auto repair all to close those holes from that. So we can make sure that we don't have any open areas. So you can see here, we have a pretty good adaptation here. One little spot poking through, I'm gonna go ahead and use bubble smooth, hit control to kind of melt that back down. That's it. So we're gonna go ahead and export this as a STL, binary STL and mill it. Put in the cam software, mill it. If if you didn't have a mill, you could 3D print it. If you did 3D print it, we would make it much, 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 much thicker for strength. Um, but how cool is this, guys? Literally, we're down to about five minutes design time on these now, um, once you know what you're doing. So there it is, milled. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, 3D printed surgical guide there. The sleeves are all appropriately fitting out of Rumexis. There's the palette there connected. So a day of surgery, a traumatic extraction, um, in this particular case where we're going to go ahead and pop that surgical guide in. This is all done flapless in this case. Um, you can see the beautiful fit of the surgical guide here. The retention pins are in. Implants are placed. The temporary titanium cylinders are placed. The prosthesis slides right in. We go ahead and pick it up using um, flowable composite or resin cement or whatever you want to use. And that's what it looks like immediately after pickup. We unscrew it, cut the pallet off, and then we fine tune that cervical area to fit it up to the abutment margin. And here we are screwed in, and here she is three days later. So you can see, I mean, this patient's just pumped with this result. And guys, you gotta do this stuff, it's so much fun. Come learn how to do it if you need more um, than just this video. Tons of courses on this um, in the future, so thank you.